networking session. Today we'll be looking at a Python Django website built with the Wagtail CMS. We're porting over an existing website, westernfriend.org, which is a magazine publication built with Drupal. And the next iteration of this site will be uh, probably largely the same, but um, we're adding a few enhancements, building it with the Wagtail CMS. The data model for this site um, in Drupal kind of or evolved organically. And for the most part, it's served pretty well. But we're taking this redesign as an opportunity to look a little bit more at the data model and uh, be more intentional about it. So I've already started and uh, gotten pretty far with um, basically magazine issues, articles, authors, and departments, uh, which are some of the main sort of entities in our data model. Not all of which are depicted here, um, but we have magazine issue an article, for example. And what we realize is that there's a, a component that's central to the site called contact, meaning any uh, sort of person or organization who's come into contact with Western Friend uh, in the time it was has been around, including uh, its previous uh, name of Friends Bolt Incorporation. So today, I'm going to be taking a, um, parts of the data model that I've written already in, in Django as Django models and Wagtail, specifically the author model, and rewriting that as a contact, which is a little bit more generic. We realized that um, you know authors were related to magazine articles, but more broadly, we have books and events and memorial meeting, uh, memorial minutes, and other uh, sort of information we'll be collecting that is more relevant to a, uh, sort of a content management or contact management. The idea of a contact management framework. The author model would be a little bit too limiting. So I suspect that I'll be struggling here a little bit to um, refactor this, but that's part of the that's the part of the game. Sometimes you have to redefine models. And particularly, we're early in the stage of developing this site, so this is the time to change to have such sweeping changes as um, you know introducing a different entity into our our data model. So I think I'll just um, create a new Django app. I'll leave the author alone for now. Rather than getting in there and kind of thrashing around and trying to break <laughs> break that. Yeah, let's see. So we have a contact app, and the model, I believe, will be based on the the Wagtail page entity, just for reference. Wagtail CMS is. Um, <laughs> really nice content management system built on Django and I mean I've just been really impressed with the uh, management experience let's see here there we go uh, I did 
just realized when you don't do Ah, uh, we need to find generic views that wagtail icon is not there. Interesting. All right, I'll have to look more into that. But the, um, you know, Django is a very mature and time battle tested uh, web framework, but it lacks a content management UX. It has the Django admin that's good for temporarily kind of spinning up a site and experimenting with your data model, but. Uh, it's not anything like a, Ju uh, a Drupal or a WordPress or maybe even Joomla experience. Particularly WordPress, though, is kind of like the pinnacle of usability. So that's where Wagtail comes in. It kind of gives you a way to organize your content and edit things in line and, and publish. It gives your publication more close. It's really nice. I've done some previous um, screencasts on this on my YouTube channel. Uh, but I do want to get to it today because I don't want to be too long during this live stream. So as noted before, um, from the front end perspective, this little wagtail icon is useful to get for an admin or user to get to the editing interface. In order to have that icon visible, I believe we just need to define the content type as a wagtail page entity. So if I come over here and I look in the magazine data models, we're essentially defining class model classes and inheriting the wagtail. Core model page. Okay, so I do like to have my IDE lend my code as I go. Um, I've been doing that in JavaScript. We, on a couple of projects, use ESLint and Prettier, and, and you know I'm fine uh, having <clears throat> the code style defined for me. I don't have a, a very strong opinions about it as long as it's like readable. Uh, I just try to keep my code pretty clean and can you know follow the uh, basically consistent patterns. So you know black seems to offer that. It's an opinionated code former for Python. I don't know a whole lot about it, but I don't mind following the conventions. That's beta. Yeah, it's, a, it's opinionated, so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> That's the point. All right, so let's see. What are we going to have here from this model? <clears throat> First thing I want to do is maybe just start with the title field and, and get a relationship formed between the contact and the magazine article.
remember that. I'm not super fresh on this code base. It's been a little bit. Okay. Here we go. Magazine article. So I'm going to be swapping out this author relationship in a minute. Well, yeah, contact. I guess I'll just pass. <clears throat> See what happens when I run the migration. I make migrations. Site configuration magazine website settings base apps. <laughs> All right, let me just really quick. So mainly just switching single quotes to double quotes, and that's actually something I've been wanting to do anyway. But this is a lot of this is just auto-generated code. thinking here for a second uh, I want to register this contact with the admin so let's see what's this I'm in the rock face, so I just commit every so often. Alright. Now, the first thing I'm going to do. <coughs> excuse me, the Wagtail admin, I'm going to get a uh, sidebar menu item here for contacts. Like I'm doing here with authors. So I'll just follow the boilerplate magazine. In the author, there's an admin pie. Let me think here, where was that? Wagtail hooks. Model admin, model admin register. Let's grab the whole thing.
our model's contact. because I don't have any field right now. This should work. Contact. Maybe I hadn't saved it. No, I had to have saved it. Yeah, there's no. And I did migrate. something I'm not sure what happened there I'm just trying to find a list of icons here. It's not a big deal. Here's a quick guess. What if uh, 
There's a contact. A V card. there I'm guessing I wish they would just list the damn icons. Let's see if I can find that. Maybe there's a listing somewhere in here. Let's try something like this. Yeah, pretty good. Okay. So essentially, I should be able to add a contact in. Here, I'm near a top level model. So, for author. made a contact.
what Django does by default is prefixes the table name uh, with the app name, and that could be pretty good. But uh, if I ever have to refactor the application and change the way how things are organized, I just want the contact to be a top level table. is going to have some of these same fields so I'll leave those comments in place and now I'm just going to check real quick under the magazine how I'm controlling the page hierarchy here there's I don't remember off the top of my head sub page parent page all right let's try this out if I If that works, can be contacts pages yeah put it right in the top level hmm. oh yeah okay I need a contacts index page that's the problem right 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 if I look closer here what So this is going to be freaking out because I haven't defined that. Essentially, um, Wagtail wants you to have, well, I'm trying to think here. I'll delete this real quick. And in Wagtail, basically, everything's a page. You can define regular Django models, but uh, to get stuff here, it's just a lot easier. You can put Django models here as well. So with Wagtail, you don't really have to write views and do routes and things like that. You just define pages and everything lines up. But the thing is, you need a, uh, to define an index page to display your content. So let's go ahead and take a look at, well, should I should have an author index. No, I didn't list all the authors. I have a magazine index. Uh, just for well yeah, I have to take that back magazine department is a custom model I didn't um, it's not a wagtail model but if you look over here in contact of course I haven't defined any views let me find a better let's get this model here real quick magazine index page So with an index page, you only want to have one. Let's start here.
So everything does get in, inserted here in this page's hierarchy no matter what. But I'm just trying to surface a couple of these things to the top level. So the contents of departments are the same as here. So essentially what we need to do now is make this migration. Save the file. Black is a pinionated formatter, so I'll just go with that. And what do we got here? Let me double check. Oh, yeah, I gotta import that. Now, for a while, I was using PyCharm, and PyCharm would actually kind of add these imports for me on, on demand. Basically, I'm gonna I'm gonna find the import rich text field under magazine models rich text field well, I can tell core fields all right it's pretty well organized I just don't know if the, how it's organized off the top of my head. Keeps complaining to me about that. So make migrations. Name field panels on it. Yeah. With contact index page now what I need to do is just add a contact and I could make that a front end of you as well So I need to be able to define this under the home index page. Magazine index at job page, but it's not registered there. Let me go back here. I guess it would just be parent page types. Should be under home. Damn it. Home page. Yeah, there's only one home page.
different apps I have to register it. to allow that is a child page sub page type yeah there we are that's the problem all right let me just run, run this commit this lint first home Comma, double quote, double quote, shortening the line, double com or double quote, white space, shortening a uh, single line. So pretty much all lint. pretty weird. So this is a this is a home page instance. Sub page type contact index page. Defaults to contact index page. All right, cool. So, just kind of getting things wired up. Hey, what's up, Mini Boss Dev? Um, this is kind of a magazine publication site. I'll show you the original one. This is the live version built with Drupal. Um, so it's this publication that goes back to I think 1926 or 1923, something like that, and. On the magazine, we have uh, this is a subscription based thing. It's a nonprofit organization. Uh, so, the most three recent issues are kind of the, so to speak, premium ones. But once they get, um, you know, past the threshold, then they're publicly available. Yeah. Well, it's made with Bootstrap, and I mean, old is relative. But yeah, it's not like 90s website. Yeah, so we're going to port it over to uh, Wagtail, but it also has this uh, community directory, and so there's more to it than just a publication website. Community memorials and uh, things like that, and a bookstore, so we'll be doing some e-commerce stuff. And you can sort of see that in our data model. This is not the complete picture, but... There's an events calendar, magazine, uh, community memorials, bookstore, some you know e-commerce features, and a few other parts that we haven't really fleshed out uh, in this kind of sketch of the model. <laughs> what do you recommend for um, a front-end like component or CSS framework? Yeah. 
That's true. Um, let me see. So there's a lot of properties on the contact. Some of this is just uh, more or less, um, these aren't necessarily properties. They could be getters. Um, so yeah, I guess property, but a relationship to other, um, whether or not it's a subscription, which is part of our data model or donations, which are financial um, records or book purchases. <clears throat> And the um, contact is serving multiple purposes. Uh, there are people and organizations. So it's kind of hard to have just one, you know, simple set of um, properties for that. But for what it's worth, we're sort of modeling our data after this. Uh, open source project called CBCRM. Kendo Bootstrap Material are the most common CSS frameworks many boss dev has seen or foundation. Yeah. Yeah. So we just went with Bootstrap for simplicity and familiarity, but I'm not really married to it. Uh, so this is CBCRM data model. It's really freaking complex, but it's been <laughs> developed for a long time. But the point is... Um, I don't know if you can see it, but they have, oh uh, shoot, I'm not gonna be able to zoom in, there we go. This contact subtype or contact entity and contacts can be people or organizations, so you have a contact type. Uh, we're not gonna use all their fields, but we do need to at least identify people and display their name and legal names for organization and first and middle name and last name for individuals. Yeah, you gotta print that thing out and put it on a wall. This is so you can just get your mind around it. But CBC Arm does quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of stuff, including uh, managing donations, event registrations, um, ma bulk mailings. It's really good software. We're just m moving away from PHP with this project, or into Python Django territory now. So. I can't figure out really a clean way and simple way to keep CBC arm around. So it's a little bit of a loss because uh, this is really good. I mean, just really good organization and community. But anyway, yeah, it has an API, so there might be something where we could still integrate with CBC arm. Yeah, so we're basically just gonna have a few fields at first in our contact model. And I'm probably not gonna get too far into that tonight. It's already 11.30 here. I do just wanna get a basic relationship in place. So we got a contacts index, and I believe, yeah, there's only one instance of that allowed. So what do we add here? So since that worked, I can revert this change. Contact index page, discard change. And what do we add here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna try to avoid the PWA stuff for a while. Like, I started a project at work, uh, just anecdotally, and I started building with Django, and our CTO said, no, you, 
get with the times it needs to be a pwa and so i had ended up having to rewrite it and i'm just <laughs> i was so pissed about that i was really frustrated at least <laughs> i don't know it took me like a couple months just to get over that frustration but it was a learning process so i'm in the midst of rewriting it and making really good headway um but yeah with this we're just going to stick pretty much with um you know, just regular Django templates as far as we can get. Uh, if anything, I might add Vue.js. I'll sprinkle that in if we need it on certain views, certain routes, or even just page components. Uh, but we don't have a lot of real-time data. You know, maybe when we get to the bookstore, something about the shopping cart might be nice. Uh, Vue.js might come in handy. You don't have to, like do your whole front end, you know, <laughs> and replace your router and everything to use Vue. You can just sprinkle it in. So, uh, and also I really appreciate the sort of this, it's pretty simple framework to get my mind around. And I've been working with like handlebars and React, uh, not Bla sorry, not React, but uh, Blaze and just doing HTML and CSS for a while. So yeah, on the PWA front, I think that would be a direction I'd like to go if needed with this project. Or SPA. Now PWA is a different thing, but uh, it might be interesting to have an offline capable app for subscribers. And that's where a PWA might be interesting, uh, like a progressive web app or whatever, we're throwing out these um, acronyms. And I'm not sure if everyone in the audience is familiar with the single page app or um, progressive web app. But basically the single page app is, you know, a JavaScript front end that serves up a more or less an entry point file and then the JavaScript takes over handling routing and things like that. And it's al almost synonymous with, you know, using React JS basically right now. Progressive web apps have some extra benefits. Being off offline capable, you know, you can make some changes or browse the app, and certain of the content has been cached locally on your on your device. So we could be caching these articles, for example, on the device. I don't know to what extent it would be useful. Mini Boss Dev, have you have you done any um, SPA or PWA development, or do you mainly just stick with what kind of frameworks do you use when you're Vue React Angular. Pick one for the love of God. Yeah. Your project won't be three times as good by doing all three at once. Yeah. I've, I've intentionally stayed away from React. Um, just something about it deeply <laughs> I'm for, sort of um, strongly intuitively like staying away from it. I know it's super popular and more power to all the people who have been, you know, contributing to that and been successful with that. Um, and I had, I missed the SPA train, the mean where an angular was on top of the world. But for several years I've been working with Meteor JS and it has, uh, came with this front end uh, language called Blaze. And it, it's very similar to HTML with handlebars and markup. Yeah, Pug, we're using Pug at work for the, some, you know, simplified HTML um, syntax, so to speak. So you don't have to have all the, the XML -y stuff. What did Pug, Pug used to be called something else. What was it called? Um, we dabbled with it when we were using, when we were developing with the Meteor. Yeah, I don't know, um, but I've seen people using, uh, let's see, what are we using, Pug and then client, uh, server side rendering app at, wor at work, and I think people are using Pug with, you know, Vue.js templates if you want, so uh, it's not really opinionated about that. I don't know about Angular or React, but the, I think React is pretty much going to be JSX. Okay, cool, let's see if I can get a relationship 
between contacts. Let's see, so the relationship between contacts and magazine articles. That's the deal. They're going to kind of replace authors in our model. So this is going to be gone. This authors app will be no more. But I can use some of the some of these templates, I think. So I'm not going to blast it right off the bat. Author details. <clears throat> so if I come back down here to the magazine models, let me see if I can close anything out. I'm done here. The magazine article. Get to that. Oh wait, there should be an outliner here. Whoa, wrong button. I'm just getting to know VS Code as well. It's really nice though. Here's the magazine article. Authored by. There's a lot of good plugins for it. So I think I'm just going to replace this. Relationship here with contact. And this is where I think things are going to start breaking a little bit because I've already got data in the database. Basically, with the um, wagtail, it, it's more or less Django models, but they add this page model. Uh, I don't know how to go to definition in, uh, I think it's like F11. I don't know. I try to go to definition in F12. Uh, and it adds some nice things like a title field, draft um, workflow, auto slugs, um, hierarchical relationships. So it does a lot of work for us, SEO. And so by inheriting from that, we're, we're getting all that for free. And sometimes it's a little bit overkill. So in that case, we'll just define a you know, plain Django model. Uh, OK, so we got a and basically the other aspect here, um, there's a couple of new relationship types. I believe this is uh, something Wagtail has print on many to many of the wagtail model cluster and we need to point that to contacts so you can have uh, contacts authoring many contacts on a single um, article many articles authored by contacts so many to many and then you have to tell wagtail what panels to display so what I'm viewing an ar uh, article here let's see Issue one, here's article one. Uh, and I go to edit that, it's gonna show me the title field automatically by default, body field, uh, rich text field. And then this autocomplete panel gives us a nice search. Um, I don't know how many authors I've got here. that 
there you go now I can add a second author so that's I mean really impressive from my perspective it um, reminds me of WordPress I, I worked with WordPress for uh, many years and several nonprofit organizations and it's been a really great experience so let's go ahead and save this draft save actually publish the change uh, you have to have one all right cool I save this change I'm going to migrate it make migrations migrate it now let's see what happens when I edit that article contact one. Oh man it just worked oh man that's really a relief okay let me commit those changes Hey, mini boss dev, do you have any uh, open source projects you got you're working on, or what's your main kind of background? All right, let's take a look. I'm going to try to wrap this session up a little bit, but uh, I want to get to a good stopping point. Uh, so I think I need to take a look at the front end now on the magazine view. The magazine article view if I go and view that live wow it just worked probably just need to rename a couple things for semantics let me double check that ah that's what we need is a contact detail page yeah all right no problem but let me double check the template code here on the magazine article just to see that things are semantic I think it's a magazine article. A couple of places I need to look. One is on the, uh, if I feature an article. Article one, and I publish this. And I look at the home page. There we go, so I got the contact view uh, there on this uh, sort of a article card. What's that called? Magazine article summary. Close this. Yeah, and it's still pretty semantic. Authored by, author, uh, author, author detail. Okay, cool. And then so magazine article, I'm sure it's going to be for each of those authored by authors. Show the author detail. Okay, cool. Um, so this is where I might just grab. Cool. So I think Mini Boss Dev may have uh, maybe gone from the chat, not seeing the response. Uh, but anybody else who's uh, who's watching here, what uh, what kind of projects are you all working on? Any open source stuff, or do you uh, what kind of tools and frameworks do you like working with? So basically, I'm going to take that author template. Ooh, I opened up my environment. I should have this author detail here. Boom, grab all that. And essentially I'll just bring it down here to the content. 
contact template new file. And I can't remember how much wiring I got to do to get this to work, but uh, extend space URL contact. I believe will be. So what this is going to do, list all the articles that uh, have been authored by that contact, if they have some. So this should be in here. And then view that uh, magazine article summary with the article. No, I can't recall. Where does data contact context comes from? Right, let's just see if this works. Yeah, I need to. I think here for a second. Okay. Magazine article summary. Okay. Here's where I'm at. This is. So I need to check the root, the roots URLs pi. All right. There we go. Department. That's the wrong one. What am I? Authors. <laughs> Contact. Huh. All right. Well, I'm not getting much response in the chat. I've lost a few viewers. <laughs> or don't post questions to the chat. Here we go. Author detail. I'll have to include these URLs. The contact URLs. All right. And the contact will have a slug. Contact detail as view. Man, I can't remember having to do all this. That's what gives me the context model. This detail view. So that should be all I need to change there. Now I'll define the route, the route. Oh, man. That I don't quite appreciate. But all right, contact detail view as contact contact detail. Oops, I contact URLs pi and then views. Django views generic detail view models and for contact. Model equals double check. Make a typo. So when I like highlight something black, it's weird. Something's happening. Okay, cool. And what else do we need? So. I have to register the URLs. So that part's working. The contact one part is working. Nice. But the 
prefixes are. the uh, main app configuration Even, uh, where are we at huh. Not settings URLs and essentially So far we've been using plural documents. So I'm going with that. From contact, singular for the app names. You import URLs as contact URLs. And we got some nice stuff breaking. I think my so this is not going to work anyway. Authors contact one. So let me check this template. stuff uh, gotta keep those and that one works too so when I view the, the article uh, body the contact link works properly and when I view an article summary the contact link works properly okay cool all right well it's almost midnight here let me commit these things and uh, kind of wrap up the session so cool well that was <laughs> less painful than I was thinking it would be to kind of swap out that or introduce a new component in our model new entity and swap it out replacing the authors entity with this new contact um, so in a following session I'll probably be cleaning up the authors removing removing that code it's it's unnecessary now and we're going to be adding a few more fields to differentiate different contact types 
and uh, display fields uh, that are relevant. If you're an organization, you would have a legal name. If you're a person, you'll have a given and family name. Uh, stuff like that will have to work out the details. And hopefully Wagtail gives me the ability to conditionally display fields based on contact type. That would be a really nice user experience. So you're only presented with the fields that are relevant to that contact type. Other things we'll be looking at, um, some more relational data, um, and building out more of these data models over time. And you know, for the time being, we're gonna not be really using any JavaScript front end framework. Just Django templates are taking us a long way. But all right, I appreciate uh, y'all who are watching here, and uh, if you have any kind of questions or comments, you can feel free to uh, get hold of me on GitHub uh, or on Brylio on Twitter. And if you notice any bugs in the code or if you want to spin this code up, well, it's uh, github.com slash westernfriend. Okay, well, thanks a lot for watching and have a great day.